This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this comic book style logo using Inkscape. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out the Inkscape Masterclass, which is a comprehensive collection of over 50 videos where I go over every single tool and function in Inkscape, and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you're interested in checking that out. So let's go ahead and get started here on Inkscape. The first thing we want to do is just set up our documents so that we're all working with a similar view. I'm going to come up here to where it says view and make sure you have custom selected and then go to zoom, go to view, zoom, and make sure you are zoomed in at one to one like that. And now what I want to do is open up the align and distribute menu with this button over here. We're going to want to make sure we have last selected chosen from that drop down. And then I'm going to open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that uh, button right there. And now that we have that open, we're all set up, we're good to get started. I'm going to create a circle first. So I'm going to come over here to the circles and ellipses tool. We're creating the half tone pattern for the background first. So I'm going to hold control and shift and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle like that. And then I'm going to convert it to a path by going to path, object to path. And we just want to make sure this is black. If, it's, if yours didn't come out black, you could just choose the colors down here like that. I'm going to choose black for here. And then I want to come over here to where it says blur and I want to bring the blur up like that. Now the percentage you should use probably won't be the same as mine. It depends on the size of the circle you're using. So I would just eyeball it. Something We want to end up with something that looks sort of like that right there. I think that's pretty good. And now what we can do is we can come over here to the uh, select tool. And where we have width and height or W and H, just make sure you have this lock icon turned on so that it locks the proportions there. And I'm going to double click on this number right here or th click three times and then just hit control C to copy whatever that value is because I'm now going to create a square. Let's come over here to the squares and rectangles tool. I'm going to convert that to a path. First I'm just going to make sure it has sharp corners and then I'm going to convert that to a path by going to path, object to path, and then I will uh, come up here. I'll grab this select tool or you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this circle. I'm going to right click that circle and go to copy and then I will grab this square right here and I will go to edit uh, paste size oh if I could find that there it is paste size and paste size and it's gonna make that square the same size that that circle is and I wanna make that white I wanna make that square white and I wanna lower that one selection so that it goes beneath the circle so I come up here where it says lower selection one step click on that and then I wanna click and drag over both of these right here so that they have them both selected and I'll come over here to where it says align. I'm going to align it on the vertical axis and on the cent on the, uh, the horizontal axis like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the width and the height of this right here, wherever it is, where it says like 391. I'm just going to change this to a nice round number like 400 and I'll hit enter so that we end up with 400 like that. And I'm going to click off of that to deselect everything. And now I'm going to create another circle. So I'm going to come over here to the circles and ellipses tool. I'm going to set the color to black. And you'll notice the color changes up here in the top right corner. As I select the color, I'm going to change it to black. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift and create a nice little, a nice round, perfectly round circle like that. Really small, about that, about that size. And I'll go to Path, Object to Path. I'm going to grab the Select tool. I'm going to hold Shift and click on this circle here so that we have them both selected. And I'm going to click on this button that says Align Top Edges. And then I'll come over here to where it says align left edges. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click off of the canvas to deselect everything. And now I'm going to select just this circle right here. I'll go to edit. Uh, we're looking for clone and create tiled clones. Now in this tiled clones menu, I'm going to come over here to where it says trace. I'm going to pick on the trace tab and make sure you have this selected right here. Trace the drawing, trace the drawing under the clones slash sprayed items. We want to trace by color. We want to have these two values both set to zero. And over here where it says apply the value to the clones, we, the only things we want selected are size and color. And then down here we want to choose width and height and we want to set the width and height to whatever this size was that we previously set. So I set mine to 400. Uh, I'm going to set this to 400 by 400. And then I'm going to go ahead and click create. And you might want to give it a minute or two to process because this is pretty CPU intensive. So mine, mine generated pretty quickly. As you can see here, we have our half tone pattern. What I have to do now is close out of this menu and I want to get rid of that blurred uh, circle in the background. First, I just want to get rid of the white square. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. 
And then I'm going to zoom in on this area right here by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. Now I want to click on that black circle down there, that blurred circle, but without clicking on the uh, little circles instead. So to do that, what I would do is I would just click on one of these little circles right here and then hold Alt and click on it again and then it will select the bigger blurred circle in the background and then we could press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And by the way, to zoom in and out, you could just hold control and roll up and down the mouse wheel like that. And to move the page around, you could just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. So now we have our halftone pattern. I, I want to make this a little different though. I want these circles to be running into each other a little bit. So I'm going to click on this circle right here and I'm going to hold control and shift and scale it up just a tiny bit. Maybe like that. And if you notice here, whatever you do to this circle happens to these circles here because these are all linked clones to this circle here. So if I were to change that to red, it would change the rest of those to red. So let me just undo that because I don't want that to be red. I'd rather that be black. I'll put this over here just so it's off to the side. And I just want to click and drag over all of these little circles right here. And I just want to group them together with this button that says Group Selected Objects. Or you could press Control G. So I'm going to put this off to the side for now. We're going to create the... Um, the star pattern that goes over the top of this next. So I'm going to come over here to the stars and polygons tool. And over here up in the toolbar, I want to have stars selected rather than polygons. I want to have eight corners, spoke ratio at 0 0.700, and rounded and randomized both set to zero. So if you don't have those values set, go ahead and type those in now. You probably don't have them by default. I have them preset because I was just making this design previously. So. Uh, now that I have it set, I'm going to hold Control and Shift and click and drag on the canvas to create our star, our star shape like that. We want to make it, we want to make it so that the points are going perfectly vertical up and down like that. If you notice here, these two points are going up and down, like that. And once we've done that, I'm going to convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Uh, I'm going to make this. Um, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a pink color like that. You can use whatever color you'd like. It's pretty irrelevant here. And then I want to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, which is over here. And I want to click and drag over this node right here, this inner node. If you notice, going around the perimeter of this design, we have inner nodes and outer nodes. I want to select all of the inner nodes like that. So I'm going to hold Shift and click and drag to select that other one as well. Hold Shift, click and drag this one, click and drag this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And again, I'm holding Shift the entire time I do this so that I can select all of these nodes. And once I've done that, I have those selected. I want to click on this button up here that says Make Selected Nodes Auto Smooth. And that's going to make them smooth like that. And then finally, I want to click on this button over here that says Make Selected Nodes Symmetric. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in on this node right here. Again, by holding Control and rolling up the mouse wheel. I want to click on just this node so I have just that one selected and hold Control and just pull these handles out a little bit so that that curve going in there, that dip is a little more smooth. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to click on all of these and just make those curves a little more smooth and fluid in there so that they look a little more natural. Because as they are right now, they don't look, uh, they, they, they look all right, but they don't look as good as I would like. So I'm going to take this, and again, we're holding control while we do this so that it locks it onto this axis, onto the axis that it's currently on. Get this one over here, like that. And then finally, I'll get this one right here. And now I'm going to press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And I'm going to take this, um, I'm going to take this object, I'm going to right click it and go to duplicate. And I'm going to make, I'm going to put this over here on top of the uh, halftone pattern and I'm going to make that black. <clears throat> and then I'll take this object right here. I want to raise this to the top by pressing the button that says raise selected, uh, raise selection to the top. And then hold shift and click on the black star and just center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And click off of it to deselect everything. And now I'm going to take just this pink star right here and hold control and shift and scale that down a little bit like that so that it looks like the black one beneath it is sort of like a back shadow. And I'm actually going to click and drag over both of those objects and I'm just going to scale them up a little bit just to fit the size of the halftone pattern a little better like that. So the next step is to create the text that goes on top of this. So I'm going to grab the text tool over here. I'm going to click on the canvas and just for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to write wow with an excl exclamation point. And I'm going to change the font of this by clicking on this button up here that says View and Select Font Family. It's a little T icon. Or you can just press Control, Shift, and T. And we're going to get our little font menu up here. And the font I'm going to use here is, you can use whatever font you'd like really, but I think for this design what, what really works best is something like 
Kumika Axis. So I'm going to choose that. If you don't have this font installed, I'll put a link to that in the description of the video. Click Apply. And there we go. We have our Kamika Axis font. I'm going to grab this Select tool now, and I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale this up like that. We want this to be pretty big so we can see it. So we're going to be working with this a little bit. I'm just going to make this font a different color for now. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it green, and then I'll go to Path, Object to Path, and then I'll click on this button up here that says Ungroup Selected Objects. And what I want to do now is click off of it to deselect everything, and I want to hold con uh, hold Control and click and drag these letters away from each other like that. We want them to be pretty separated. And again, I'm holding control so that it locks it onto the horizontal axis so that we don't go accidentally off into space like that and they're no longer aligned. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag over all of these. I'm going to right click them and go to duplicate. I'm going to make them black. And then I'm going to click the button that says lower selection to the bottom. And it's going to put them beneath the green letters. And I want to give them a black outline by holding shift and clicking on the color black down here. And depending on what your presets are, you'll notice a very thin outline coming around the edges there. I want to make that bigger, so I'm going to come over here to the Stroke Style tab, make sure we have this set to pixels, and I just want to try something like maybe 5, see how that looks. Okay, it looks a little thicker, but not thick enough. I'm going to try maybe 15. Uh, that looks a little better. I think I'll go with that. And over here where it says Join, I just want to make sure we have a rounded join like that. And what I will do next is I'm going to click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to take this green letter right here. Make sure you have the green one selected and not the black one selected. You'll know you have the green one selected when you see down here in this little uh, stripe. It shows you the color of the object you have selected. So I have that selected. I'm going to turn that white. I'm going to take this one, turn that white. Oops. There we go. Take this one, turn that white, and then take that one and turn that white as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag over both of these exclamation point items and just raise that to the top with this button that says Raise Selection to the top and hold Control and just click and drag it over to the left like this so that it's slightly overlapping the letter W. Same thing, I'm going to click and drag over all of these objects now. I'm going to raise them to the top, hold Control, click and drag them over here so that they're slightly overlapping the letter O. Do the same thing, select all of these objects, raise them to the top. Hold control, and sh uh, hold control and just click and drag this over to the left so that these letters are all sort of overlapping each other like that. So what I'm, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to click and drag over everything. I'm going to group it together with the button that says Group Selected Objects. And then I want to right click it and go to Duplicate. And I want to turn the whole thing black by just clicking on the color black like that. And I just want to move this down and to the left slightly just to offset a little bit. And I want to come over here to where it says lower selection one step. Click on that so that it lowers it beneath the word there. So it kind of looks like a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of like a blocky 3D sort of effect like that. I think right there looks pretty good. Finally, I'm going to click and drag over the entire thing. I'm going to group it together. Make sure we have it raised to the top. And I'm just going to place this over here on top of our design. I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale it down so that it fits nicely. Uh, one thing you'll want to do before you scale it. Up here where it says uh, when scaling objects scale the stroke width by the same proportion, make sure you have that turned on. Because if you don't have that turned on, the, the size of the outline is going to change as you scale it. Like watch what happens here as I make it bigger. The outline, or you know what, I gotta turn it back off. As I scale this up, the outline gets smaller. So if I turn this on, it locks the outline to scale in the same proportion as the, uh, the text item here. So I'm gonna put this over the top. I'm just gonna scale this down like that. I'm going to place that there. I'm going to click on it again to get the rotation handles. I'm just going to take the rotation handle right here, this little corner arrow, and just rotate that around to give it a little bit of a slant like that. And there you go. Uh, we have completed our uh, logo design. So that is how you can go about creating a uh, comic style logo with Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>